Starting us off tonight is Democratic strategist James Carville, who I've been waiting to talk to since I watched The War Room many years ago. It's great to see you here. So I want to just start there, because you've said this, and this really stuck with me, and I could not agree with it more. I mean, this is not a normal election. We can't treat it like that. But in your view, how should people, there's no historical parallel, how should people be talking about it out there? Well, first of all, Donald Trump is an adjudicated rapist. Uh, that's in, in the words of the judge, by the ordinary definition, actually, then maybe he's just a sexual assaulter but been found by a jury. He's also mm -hmm. an adjudicated business fraud. Mm -hmm. This is not normal. And, and so he must be identified as that at all times. And if the press is go, well, Trump said this, Biden said that, Biden said this, Trump, no, no. It, it, they have to be reminded at every juncture. This is, you know, when I grew up, uh, in, I was in college during the civil rights era. That's how bold I am. And you know what Pulitzer Prize winning journalists didn't do when Martin Luther King said something? They didn't go to Bull Connor and get a response. They printed what King didn't. They won Pulitzer Prizes. And there's a lot of these journalists, and you work with them, you know a lot of them, mm -hmm. they just can't wait to normalize this. They can't wait to have drinks and yucks with Jason Miller uh, or Steve Miller and just act like everything is just, you know, it's, it's a Clinton and Dole, it's Obama and Romney, and yeah. we want to have our fun just like, you know, you and Jen did. No, that's not what it is. That's not it at all. We can't let them do that. It's not policy speeches. Now, you are pulling off a pink college sweatshirt, so I don't call yourself old, I'll say that. <laughs> now, I, I, I wanted, there, there's a debate. I'm, I'm sure people ask you this all the time. My friends ask me this. People ask me this as well on TV. Why doesn't President Biden go after Trump on being a sexual assaulter? Why doesn't he go back after him on all of these legal troubles and legal turmoil? And you and I both know well, there are lots of levers in a campaign. There's the candidate, there's paid media, right. there's campaign spokespeople. How should they be approaching this and going after Trump on these legal issues? And how should that be the same right. as what the president's doing or separate then? I would tell the president and his campaign this, we got your back, dude. We're going after him with a meat cleaver, okay? A, a oh. rhetorical meat cleaver, if you will, but yeah. that's what we're going to do. And the president can go out, talk about what he's doing on infrastructure, the tremendous progress he's making, 40,000 new projects around the country. He can talk about other things, but uh, he doesn't—we can handle this. At, we, can, we can do this at, at, at a little bit lower level, and we have to keep the heat on. We got to remind people of what's at stake here. And let the president and his campaign go about and doing the things that they can do. They, I know most of those people, they, they're all quite talented. They're all quite good. We need to quit coughing about the staff work and get on and let's get this train moving and get and save this country and save this constitution because that's really what we faced with here. It, it is what it's about. So a meat cleaver on the outside, but let the president <laughs> focus on other well, things. Yeah. He can be the scalpel. We're the meat cleaver. That's that, that meat cleaver weaver. That's me. This, let's go get him. <laughs> I like it. People want meat cleaver T-shirts out there. So I, I said this, That's and I'm it. a believer in this. And a, a lot of people have kind of weighed in on this question recently on whether or not we should be talking about Trump more or less, right? Because there was a debate. Do we show his speeches? Do we talk about all the crazy things he's doing? And I'm of the view we have to talk about the crazy things he's doing, even if we're tired of it, um, because that's how people will know how crazy he is and what November presents. But what do you think? So what, what I'm scared of is, OK, we talk about it. We say, all right, we talk about it. And then they start going and say, well, this is his position. This is Biden's position. This is this. This is that. And it becomes like, well, we just vote on the person. No, this this is not normal. This is not what you're used to. This is an entirely different thing. The man has been adjudicated by a jury of his peers as a, a sexual assaultist or a rapist in terms of the word of the judge. He's already been an adjudicated business fraud. We're just waiting to see how much it's going to cost him. You cannot let him up. You can't normalize him. You can't let him off the canvas. Mm -hmm. Not not for one second. And it might not be the most fun thing to do in a campaign. It might not be what I want to be doing when I'm in my 80th year, but it's what's necessary. We don't get, we don't get to do what we want to do. We get to do what we got to do. And that's where yeah. we are right now. We got to keep the foot on this guy, right on his neck, take our heel and twist it.
and never Take let the it. Take and twist it, which means we got to talk about them. So let, let me ask you about a thing that I, I feel like the Biden. It's hard for the Biden team, or they're struggling with a little bit, which is the economic messaging, right? And I always hate to say right. blame it on messaging because everybody likes to always blame it on messaging. Right. But they do have good economic data. There was good data last week. It's also true you can't tell right. people how they should feel about the economy. You ran a campaign where the economy was pretty central. So what, right. what advice would you be giving them about how to talk about this? So for two years, the press, the, the financial press, every, everyone said there's going to be a recession. There's a recession. It's yeah. terrible. And people kept reading that. You know what? If you say something long enough and often enough, people will sort of believe it. So what the president can do is say, this is where they said we would be. We clearly better than that. But if you try to argue and you tell people you're in a great economy and they don't feel it, they get mad at you. But you're certainly yeah. doing a lot better than, than projections. And you can talk about things like the prescription drug or prescription drug costs. You can talk about the subsidies that for health insurance that are coming up, the record number of people on health insurance. And I understand that and don't ever use the word transitory and do not use the word inflation. <laughs> Cost of living. Transitory. We understand no, nah, that's a stupid transitory team transitory. Get rid of it. But we're, 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 I, we understand that. We're working really hard. Uh, we hope, you know, we think we've seen some benefits. We're certainly doing a lot better than you were told we're going to do. And we and also go back to this infrastructure. These are tangible things that we've been talk, dreaming about this since the interstate highway system. Mm -hmm. And he can do that. It's legitimate. It's bipartisan. It's showing America can work again, that we can do things as a country. And I think that's very important for the president's message. But it's equally important that we keep Trump front and center in this. Don't let him escape. Don't let him be normalized. That's how you. Nope. That's how we can lose this. Meet Cleaver and put no a boot on his neck. We got it. We got a that's few it. terms there. We're we're going to remind awesome. people of. <laughs> <laughs> no, let me let me ask you. Well, I have you here, but just about the Republican primary because this is obviously going on. Nikki Haley's been out there every day. She's been going after Trump much harder. I mean, one this this feels like it kind of might help President Biden. But what do you think? And how do you think they should keep using that? I, I don't want to relitigate 2016. But Bernie Sanders cost there's a reason, it's one of the reasons that Trump is there. I think this is great that Nikki Haley is saying in our hats off to these Republican donors that continue to support her. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, obviously she doesn't have that much chance, but every day that she's in there, every day that she's on the attack is a good day. And she's putting Donald Trump front and center. And you know, a lot of these billionaire Republican donors that I, I, I really don't care for very much, thank God. Yeah, I never thought, thank God for well, maybe the Koch brothers or something, but keep her in there <laughs> and stay and stay on the cutting edge because that's going to that's going to cost him. I, I, I promise you. And I see Liz I'm, Cheney has given us some some money. Great. I'm all for it. We're going to do a cheers to the Koch brothers and Liz Cheney in 2024. Welcome that, to 2024. Okay. Here's where we are. Um, <laughs> right. Let me ask you to, just about the Haley, the Haley voters, because, you know, we saw New Hampshire. We looked at the data and some of the numbers. Kind of interesting. Do you think some of those people basically said, I voted for Haley, but I'm going to support Biden. Some of them weren't quite there on Biden. Do you think that's fertile ground? Do you think the Biden team should be focused on that group? There's a lot of groups to focus on. You just have to win the most votes and the right. most electoral votes, of course. So a lot of people, you know, people I voted for are Republicans, right? They generally vote Republican. But you, you have a substantial number that's saying that they can't vote for Trump. Guess what? Welcome. We want you. We yeah. can get, if we get through this threat to the Constitution, then we can go back and fight over the capital gains tax cut or fight over the minimum wage or, or whatever the fights we had in the past. But right now, uh, Jen, we're in a fight for the Constitution of the United mm -hmm. States. And, you know, the, in the World War II, they had the Union cost. They were working with the mafia. They were working with everybody. We had to, we had to win the war. After, mm -hmm. after you win the war, you, you settle everything out. So thank you. Thank you, Nikki Haley donors. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. You, you're doing the Lord's work out there, and we'll keep the old meat cleaver sharp and in action here. <laughs> That's right. And on the meat cleaver, perfect place to end. James Carville, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us this evening.